What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with a fully Nikki face because we are going to be doing a foundation test today. A few days ago, Nabla sent me their Close Up Flawless Beauty Box, which contains their new Close Up Futuristic Foundation, as well as their new setting powders, their new sponge, and a couple of new complexion brushes, as well as three shade extensions of their already existing concealer. I wanted to get a good feel of like how I actually feel about this foundation because foundation is such a fickle thing, and I feel like sometimes you can try it and have it a really good day or a really bad day, and just just that one first impression trial doesn't really work out very well as far as reviews are concerned. So I've been wearing this foundation on and off for the last week or so. I filmed the wear test on one of the days. And I also filmed what it looked like immediately after my first application of it so that you guys can get a picture of how it looks in natural light and how it wears throughout the day. And today I'm going to apply it the way that I like to apply it the best. I'll do some swatches of all the shades for you guys. I will also use the sponge, use the brush, brushes, use the setting powder, and discuss what I think of all of it throughout the whole thing. The one thing that I'm not going to be using today is the new shades of concealer. Reason being that the three new shades, none of them really match me, first of all. And second of all, I have already used their concealer in the past and I really don't like it on me, which is strange because I have heard people absolutely rave about their concealer and I'm sure that it's great on some people, but for some reason it just does not sit well on my skin. So um, that's already my review on that. <laughs> I'm going to prime my face using my Milk Hydro Grip Primer, which I have still been loving, by the way. I did a review on this not too long ago. If you haven't seen that yet and you would like to, I'll put that right up here on the screen so you can click over to that if you like. Don't forget to come back. And in the center of my face, I'm gonna use the Milk Blur Stick. This is like my ultimate combination right now. I always really use the blur stick in the middle of my face, regardless of what primer I use, but these two together, ooh are so good. As far as the shade range is concerned, this is a 20 shade range, which is a lot smaller than a lot of brands are releasing right now. But the range itself seems to be pretty evenly spread from light to dark. You guys can make your own assessment and your own judgment on that. I did film some arm swatches so that you guys can see what they look like next to each other and also so you can see what they look like outside of the bottles because let me pick it up for you. The bottle is like a frosted kind of plastic so you can't really see the actual shade of the foundation inside the bottle. It makes it look like it has like a white, more like ashy cast to it than it does when it comes out of the bottle. So even though swatching the shades that don't fit me probably isn't going to help you match yourself per se, it might give you a little bit of a better picture of what some of the undertones look like. Hopefully it'll be helpful. If not, then I wasted my time swatching them. But I'd rather try to be helpful if I can and have it not work than not try it. Do you know what I mean? There's L10, L20, L30, L40, L50, M10, M20, M30, M40, and M50. Next we have T10, T20, T30, T40, and T50, D10, D20, D30, D40, and D50. Before we get started, please don't forget to take a second to leave a like on this video if you don't mind because that helps me out in a big way and I always appreciate it. And also, if you are new here, maybe you've been perusing a few videos and you just haven't committed yet, I would love to encourage you to subscribe because I have a piece of my own hair in my hand that I'm pulling across my face, which is always entertaining and also because I think you would enjoy these videos and I would love to have you around. I am going to clip my hair back and start priming this face so we can get started on the application process of this foundation. And as we do that, I will insert little clips of the wear tests and all that stuff that I did this week so you guys could get a really good picture of what this foundation is like. I'm gonna take two pumps of the Milk Hydro Grip Foundation and put it on with my fingers, which is the way that I do this generally. Color that Nabla sent me, props to them for being able to shade match me over the internet. I don't know how they did that because L50 is like a really, really good match for me, except for right now, probably because I did my fake tan last night. So with a fresh fake tan, 
I may be a bit closer to M10. The packaging looks like this. It is a twist off cap and inside you have a little squeeze tube. It is not a pump. The way the packaging functions reminds me a lot of Benefit Hello Happy Foundation. This type of packaging is fine. I prefer a pump always, but for sanitation reasons and like ease of use, this is like second to best after a pump. I'm gonna squeeze a bit of this onto the back of my hand and I am going to be applying it with their sponge. This sponge is a typical beauty blendery type shape, except that it has two sloped sides and it also has a square top, which is nice for kind of getting it underneath your eyes when you use it for concealer. Hmm, this actually still is a pretty good match for me. I'm just gonna add a little bit of bronzer when we're done. So this is L50 and even with my fake tan, this is actually a pretty good match. So I'm gonna stick with this. I described this as a medium coverage, which I would say is very, very accurate. Uh, it's very much medium it covers but it also still shows your freckles and your moles through however they do describe the coverage as buildable and i experimented with that a little bit a few of the times that i wore it this week and i'll show you right now actually because i can show you right over here it definitely is buildable it doesn't really get like heavy looking when you build it over itself but it does become more opaque. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build that coverage on one side of my face and leave the other half bare for now so you can kind of compare what my skin looked like before to what it looks like with the foundation on. So after the second layer, you can still see like little hints of my moles and stuff coming through, but they're definitely lighter than they were before. I would not say that you can build this up to a high coverage, but you could definitely build it up to be on the high end of medium. Okay, so this side of my face is with the close-up foundation and this one has nothing on it. And the cheek area has two layers of coverage where the forehead only has one. I'm gonna zoom you in really, 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 really close so you can see. Now that we saw the half and half, I'm gonna continue on with the rest of my face. I'm just taking another dollop about the same size to do the other half of my face, which means you need about two pumps worth to do a full face and build up the coverage a little bit if you want. And as far as how this foundation feels on the face, it feels really, really light. I do have one little gripe with this foundation and I'll show you exactly what I mean right now because it's happening right now, but this is also an issue that I have with a lot of foundation, so it's not unique to this, but for some reason when I apply it with a sponge, it makes the pores on my nose look absolutely batshit, but it's only if I do it with a sponge. If I buff it in afterward with a brush, it sits beautifully. It's just for some reason on that spot, certain foundations sit above my pores and don't go in. I'm gonna zoom and buff so you guys can see. So I'm not sure how bad it looks on camera, but in person, like, I'll, oh no. For, for some reason, and this is again with a lot of foundations, that only happens on my nose area when I apply it with a sponge. If I buff it in with a brush, I guess it like swirls it into the pores more evenly and it looks so much better. So um, I would say if you have some enlarged pores on certain areas of your face, be aware that you may need to buff this in a little bit with a brush. But once you do that, it looks great. So do with that information what you will. Speaking of the brushes, this is the foundation buffer brush. I'm not big on applying my foundation with a buffer brush, honestly, but for like little things like this, it comes in handy. Um, is this one particularly really amazing or special? No, but it is really pretty. These brushes are really nice. Novel brushes are really good quality. I have a bunch of them. You guys always ask me, about what I'm using for my highlight, and I always use a Nabla brush for my highlight these days. They're well constructed, they are nice and soft, they're high quality brushes. No complaints about the brushes whatsoever, it's just, you know, it's not terribly unique, it's just a cute buffer brush. I'm gonna conceal my under eye area, and while I do that, I'm going to talk to you guys about how I felt about this foundation as it wore throughout the day while I tried it out earlier this week. So 
I'm using the Too Faced Born This Way Multi Sculpted Concealer in the shade Vanilla. So the first day that I wore this was actually a day that I was filming. Um, so you guys kind of saw this already and just didn't know it. I didn't conduct a wear test on the first day though because it was the day that I was filming the uh, Game of Thrones collection, like one of the days, because that was like a two or three day filming process. I wore it on the day that I filmed all the lip swatches and stuff and I think two of the makeup looks and I did not want to do a wear test because I didn't think that it was fair to wear test a foundation on a day where I was like wiping off several parts of my makeup a couple of times because like, nothing's gonna look good after that. But I'll show you what it looked like that day when I first applied it. This was before I even put my rest of my Game of Thrones makeup on. On the first application, I already could tell that I was going to pretty much like this foundation as long as it didn't wear off terribly. But like I said, it wasn't exactly the day to test that properly. So I went ahead and I wore it again on another day of this week and I conducted a wear test on that day. I wore the foundation for about eight hours and I treated it exactly the way that I would treat any foundation, except that I used their setting powder. Instead of the one that I usually wear, which is the Hourglass Veil Powder, I used their new Close Up Pressed Powder, which the packaging looks like this. It looks like this on the inside. It is also a pressed powder, which is not something I usually go for, but I figured for the sake of trying new things, I would test this out as well. So I powdered my face for this wear test with this powder. The powder comes in three different shades. So this one is light and it swatches like that. The next one is medium and it swatches like that. And then there's deep, which looks like that. And it swatches like that. So those are the three shades. It's very, very hard to say whether these two shades are deep enough for the medium and deep foundations because I don't have anybody but myself to test it on. But the powders are very, very translucent. So I would imagine that they're probably very flexible as far as who can use them. And it doesn't seem like they leave much of like a powdery, like white cast or anything. They are truly, truly translucent. So hopefully that means that those three shades can cover all of the shades of the foundation. But like I said, I can't really know for sure. I'm gonna pick up their precision powder brush and go into the light setting powder and set what I did underneath my eyes. So now as far as the wear time, I felt like for a lighter coverage foundation, this actually wore really well. A lot of times when I wear something that's more medium coverage, I feel like by the end of the day, I look like I'm wearing nothing, but I definitely still felt like my makeup looked pretty decent. And like I said, I treated the makeup like I normally would, except that I used their powder. So I used setting spray, I used primer, all of that. Performance wise, I was super happy with it. I felt like it was very comfortable to wear. I didn't feel like anything was heavy on my skin throughout the day. I'm actually gonna powder my entire face with this, but I'm gonna switch to the other brush. This is their big powder powder brush. I'm going to use that to dust that over my whole face. So now that that's applied to my whole face and set with their powder, I am going to zoom you in so you can examine what that looks like just sitting on my skin without anything else over it and just the foundation and their powder. I have so many forehead lines. It's really starting to get on my nerves. I'm gonna go ahead and bronze up my face a little bit. This is the Beauty Bakery Coffee and Cocoa Palette and I'm gonna go into the shade Deja Bru on my Real Techniques blush brush. I was gonna warm up the high points of my face with that so you guys can see how things apply over the powder and stuff. Products seem to apply really nicely over it, uh, especially after you powder it. Lately, I've been powdering my whole face all the time anyway because it's getting a little humid and warmer out these days and I am just a very greasy bitch sometimes, man. I have combination skin, but at the same time, like the part that is the oily part of that combination is oily. This Beauty Bakery bronzer is beautiful, by the way. I don't know if you guys have ever tried their stuff, but their bronzer is lovely. I am going to go finish the rest of my makeup. I am going to film another tutorial right now with the High Tides and Good Vibes palette from Tarte because you guys said you wanted to see that. So I am gonna do some looks with it. That will be up later this week if you are waiting for that. 
and um, after I do my eyes and finish the rest of my face, I'll come back, show you what this foundation looks like with a full face, and then give you my final opinion on each of these products. Okay, so I finished my makeup. This is a tutorial that I did with the Tarte High Tides and Good Vibes palette. You guys will see that later this week. I actually wound up having to redo underneath my eyes a little bit. We had a bit of fallout with this blue shade here, but uh, essentially though, it's still the same as we started. I redid it with the same products that I used the first time around. It just might not look quite as clean as I would prefer for a foundation and powder recap. Overall, I like this foundation a lot and I also like the powder a lot. I think that of the two, I actually, believe it or not, I actually think I like the powder more. I don't usually go for pressed powders, but there's something about it that I find very like blurring on the skin. It's also very, very easy to get enough to powder your whole face because it's a very soft powder. And I just feel like it gives a really nice finish, like a soft focus sort of a look without making it look heavy and cakey. And even when I powder my whole face, which is something I don't always do, it really looks fresh still, regardless of the fact that I have powder all over my whole face. My makeup wore well with it and not just the foundation. I used it as an under eye setting powder a couple days and it worked well as that too. Out of these two, the foundation I like, but the powder I love. The foundation itself I find to be very light on the skin. I think it's a really nice natural finish. I do think that the term buildable might be a little bit misleading with this one because it is buildable for sure. You can definitely layer it and it sits nicely, but it's never really gonna build to completely full coverage. You can build it from a very light medium coverage to a heavier medium coverage, but in my opinion, it's still in the medium range. I would say that the finish is a natural finish. It's not super, super dewy, but it's also not completely matte, which thank God I prefer that. I really don't like completely matte foundations, but I also don't like anything that's like so dewy that it makes me look sweaty. And like I said, around my nose, it did sit weird on my pores unless I buffed it in with a brush. That is something that happens to me a lot in that area. There are some foundations that I have that don't do that. For example, the IT Cosmetic CC Cream does not do that for some reason, but most of my favorite foundations do. Like the Too Faced Born This Way, I need to buff that in around my nose too. I don't like applying things with a brush, so I don't do it to my whole face. So what I wind up doing is using the sponge all over my face and then just buffing in the nose area to smooth it back out again. And that's how I solve that problem. But if you have super large pores in your center of your face or anywhere really, just know that you might need to buff it into that area to get it to sit nicely. If you put it on with a sponge, it might look a little bit little. Speaking of the sponge, so the sponge shape is, I've seen quite a few sponges coming out in this shape lately, and I think I like it because I do like this sharp edge for getting right underneath the eye to apply my concealer. Um, it definitely is nice if you're gonna use it to apply powder to cut underneath your cheekbone as well. And as far as the texture of the sponge, I would say this reminds me of the Real Technique sponges, which I like. It's a little bit more dense than a beauty blender, but not quite as dense as like some of those like really hard sponges that you get. One thing I did notice with this sponge though, is it dries a lot faster than my other sponges. Like if I wet it at the beginning of filming, by the time I finish filming, I need to wet it again. So that's just something to note. Not necessarily a bad thing, especially if you wanna throw it in your bag and bring it with you, but if you take a really long time to do your makeup, you might need to get up and wet it again. I'm gonna zoom you guys in again so you can see for one last time how it's sitting after it's been on my face a little bit. Do keep in mind that I had to redo underneath my eyes once or twice because I was having some fallout from the eyeshadow tutorial that I just filmed. But I wanted to make sure that you guys get to see because sometimes like you put on a foundation and then 20 minutes later, it looks very different. So just wanted to show you how it sits after it really settles into your face. I think it actually looks better on my forehead wrinkles now than it did a few minutes ago, so that's nice. And around the rest of my face, it's sitting pretty much the same, I would say, as it was when we first applied. Overall, I really like this foundation. I think that if you are somebody who likes medium coverage or wants something that's a natural finish, that's gonna be very light on your skin for the summer months, this might be really nice for you. I 
totally think that if you're looking for a pressed powder, you should try this out because I think the finish of this pressed powder is beautiful. And as far as pressed powders are concerned, I feel like it gave me much more wear time than they normally do. Leave me a comment down below. Please let me know if you have tried this foundation. Are you interested in trying this foundation? What do you think of all the things we talked about here today? Also let me know in a comment, do you usually go for pressed powder or a loose powder? Because I have been a loose powder bitch for a really long time, but um, this one might be changing my mind a little bit. Please don't forget to take a second to leave a like on this video if you don't mind because it helps me out in a big fat blossoming love filled sort of way that you just can't even comprehend how much that one little click does for me. And also if you are new here, I would love it if you would subscribe because I would enjoy having you here for my future videos. To keep up with me between videos, to see close ups of my makeup looks, to see all of the other more creative stuff and lip art that I do behind the scenes, PR unboxings, polls to decide what is going on here on this channel. Come follow me over on Instagram you don't want to miss out on all of the other stuff that goes on over there that I don't do here. I think that's all for today. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!